Hello, my name is Paul Galata, Senior Technology Specialist at Mauser Electronics. Today I'm here at Bourne's Carrollton, Texas lab with Bourne's Field Application Engineer Paul Smith, who will demo a new innovation in gas discharge tube technology, Bourne's Flat GDT. Hello, my name is Paul Smith, Field Applications Engineer for Bourne's, and I'm going to introduce you to Bourne's Flat GDT. A GDT is often used to help protect outdoor equipment from surges due to lightning strikes since they're able to absorb a tremendous amount of energy. A schematic of typical lightning protection shows how a GDT can be used to protect sensitive electronics. The general idea is that GDTs are relatively slow devices but are able to absorb much higher surge energies when compared to semiconductors. The TVS provides fast, low-level protection during the initial portion of the surge. The series inductor slows the rise in current flowing into the TVS to keep it at a safe level, protecting the TVS. By the time the surge current reaches dangerous levels, the GDT has triggered, shorting the current to ground, protecting all the electronics. Equipment such as wireless access points and small cell 5G radios are often installed on towers, which not only exposes them to lightning strikes, but also requires them to be small and lightweight. This places design constraints on the components that can be used. Small is good, as long as performance is not sacrificed. To meet this need, Borns has developed the Flat GDT. As you can see, the Flat GDT takes up much less volume, enabling smaller products without sacrificing any protection. The particular product we're showcasing today is the 2019 GDT, which has similar performance to the 2029, a standard GDT product. By comparing the data sheets of the Flat 2019 to the standard 2029, you can see they have identical performance in the key electrical specs. The parameters required to maintain the same performance is the gap length, which determines the desired breakdown voltage, and the leakage path. As you can see, these are both the same for the two designs. We will now observe the waveforms while the GDTs are exposed to a 3Ka surge to see how well they each can protect against it. The surge is an 8x20 current waveform, which means it has an 8 microsecond rise time and a 20 microsecond 50% pulse width. This is a standard typical waveform used for surge testing. I am now charging the generator for the standard 2029 GDT. There will be a delay after I hit the fire button before the pulse starts. What we're seeing is the wave shape of the injected current and the resulting GDT voltage. Looking at the voltage waveform, there's a large initial spike which triggers the GDT in about 100 nanoseconds. This is the spark over voltage, which is about 1 kV for this 2029 GDT. After spark over, the GDT crowbars the surge current, diverting all the current through itself. This is called the arc voltage and is about 20 volts for this part. This is a huge amount of current we're dealing with. You can see why GDTs are the preferred method of lightning surge protection. Now I'll load the 2019 GDT and perform the same surge. You can see the same surge current waveform as before. And as you can see, the spark over voltage is again about 1 kV, about the same as the standard GDT. The arc voltage is about 20 volts, also about the same as before. As you can see, the performance of both parts are close enough to be within tolerance of each other. Thank you for that demo, Paul. As you can see, Bourne's Flat GDT has demonstrated that its surge performance is virtually identical to that of a standard GDT. With its unique shape, the Flat GDT allows for a much wider range of product form factors. You can now take advantage of the superior lightning protection Flat GDTs offer in products that would otherwise be too small to contain standard GDTs. For more information, white papers, and additional resources for Bourne's Flat GDT, visit Mauser.com.